Hey everybody, welcome to My Usual Me and welcome back to Myth of Empires where today I'm going to talk about the things I wish I knew when I started my game almost a week ago. These are the things I wish I'd known when I first started. So we're going to go ahead. I started a brand new character on a custom server. Um, the gather rate here is times seven, so it's higher. The experience is times two. I changed it to times two because times 10 was way too fast. You wouldn't be able to follow it. So we're going to go ahead. First of all, right off the bat, um, so things are going to go a little faster than they would in your normal, um, your normal usual server, okay? So be aware. You're not going to be able to advance as fast as I am, so be aware that that, that is a thing. Okay, so right off the bat, guys, we says um, novice mode is recommended for novice players. Novice players get a better experience at the beginning and can adapt to the game sooner. That's because they give you quests to do, and it, which in turn gives you copper and experience, and it kind of holds your hand along the way. I highly recommend you do this. So we're going to go ahead and do the recommended choice. I did do that, and that and so and that that did me right. Also, the 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 mode of operation here. They, you want to know, do you want to be able to attack and block in eight different directions or four? Now, the, uh, the answer should be obvious to most people, but maybe it's not to some. I chose the eight directional attack. I think it works for much better. Some people are saying that the, game, the, the, the fighting is janky. They may have picked the classic mode and didn't like it. You can't change it. And, or once you, uh, so you, you can chase it, change it in the system setting control. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go. Okay, so choose that. Um, and then... I for it says choose press I to open inventory and it says you can choose expertise according to the flashing button. I for inventory. There's uh, the flashing button always oh, right up here. See the flashing button. So what we do is we go to talent and skill, and immediately we see this. Okay, these are your five. These are your five um, attributes. You have strength, agility, physique, wisdom, and charisma. So what we're doing, guys, is your strength deals with one-handed and two-handed weapons, your shield, your pole arms, and your heavy armor, okay? As you use these things, they, they will level up, okay? Like if, if the more you get hit with your heavy armor, the more it will level up. The more you make heavy armor, it will level up. Same with your one-handed and two-handed weapons. Um, so, and then your pole arm and your shield, obviously your agility deals with throwing rocks and axes and javelins, your bow, your crossbow, riding a horse, light armor, then your physique, you have a physique, which is literally your physical wellness and like how, how in shape are you? Okay. Uh, this is the, this is the, 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 uh, the marker here where you are actually able to gain your extra carry weight at level, um, 75, you're going to be able to. Um, get 50 extra carry weight. And then down here at level um, 600, you're going to be able to increase your carry weight by 100. That's how you get your extra carry weight. So you know, a lot of people are saying, I can't carry anything. It's so dumb. Well, you if you if you ex exercise when you're running around, jumping, climbing things, I mean, climbing around or whatever, um, you're going to increase this physique level. And it's going to, and this line right here, Right there, see that black arrow and then this line? That's where you, that's your level and it will move forward. And when it goes crosses over a circle, you click on it to activate that perk. And so there we have physique, mining, wood cutting, hunting, planting. And so what you will do is as you gain levels, as you do quests, as you get experience, you will gain expertise points. Now automatically they start you with two and but let's go ahead and finish your other perks or your other your other uh, abilities here uh, attributes. Uh, you have wisdom, which deals with uh, craft. It says crafting. Uh, it's uh, dec okay. This is decreases crafting uh, item crafting time by five percent. Uh, decreases item crafting by ten percent. Uh, decreases item crafting by fifteen percent. Decreases item crafting by twenty percent. So you get the idea of the progression of things. We also have siege building armor and medicine along the wisdom okay uh during charisma we, this is what this is about this is all about your your uh your soldiers when you when you uh when you get a soldier to agree to come help you or when you knock one out and you put it on the torture rack and you make him help you because you've tortured him until he gives up um, you have both different two different types two different ways you can do that um so that's what this is. And I won't deal with any of that because war right now is not a thing you, you need to worry about. Right now you need to worry about leveling up, doing the quests. And um, unless you're going to go straight to the PvP server, in which case if you have a guild that's already there, or a um, if you already have a, um, not a, 
you got a guild that's already there, then you probably shouldn't, you probably don't need these videos. I'm going to go to physique though, because I want that carry weight. Okay. I want that carry weight. So I'm, uh, so I'm, I want that extraordinary strength at level 75. So I've got two points. So what we can do to raise, to get extra XP, to get a, um, a bonus XP right off the bat, we go ahead with these little curly cues and you see there's a plus sign right here. We're going to hit the plus sign once. Oh, do you want to increase your skills expertise point? I do. And see how it, it widened itself out? We're going to do it again. I got a second one. We're going to do that right there. So for the physique. Now, if you decide that you uh, have, have done enough in, in one area, you can respec. It, it will at first not cost you anything. But if you go negative, boop, it'll pop up and says reset exper expertise point. You can reset an expertise point one point at a time. The number of times you've used a copper, point, or a copper coins to reset your expertise points this week is zero. And the copper required is zero because I haven't done it yet. Now, at first it's free, but the more you do it, the more you reset and move it into different abilities, the more it's going to cost you. So if you are um, doing a bunch of different things and you're bouncing your, 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 uh, your, your, your experience bonus around, you're going to end up, um, it's going to end up costing you. But that's okay because we've got, we've got some things we can do to help mitigate that. So it's not that big a deal. Actually, that's a very, very small deal. All right, so what we're going to do here, guys, I'm going to do put mine in physique because I want that extra carry weight as soon as possible. And now I guess we're going to go ahead and we're going to make ourselves some tools. I'm going to collect a, a couple of a rock, a, a, okay, and a branch. Picking this stuff off the ground, I I do have this. Um, I have the the gather rate up, but it looks like stuff off the ground doesn't count as being um, as being uh, the times seven that I've got. So, or does it? Let me look. No, 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 it doesn't. Okay, that's fine. We're just going to get some branches right quick. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to pick some bushes. Let me pick some bushes. Oh, yeah, it totally... Okay. Whoa, stop. Whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down. I just picked like three bushes and got to level four. The expertise... I mean, the, the leveling is only supposed to be times two. So this is really fast. So bear with me. Um, we're going to get levels like crazy. So I got to level four right now. When you raise up a level, you're going to want to go to the crafting recipes, okay? And we already got the tool introduction, which allows us to get the torch, the stone axe, the stone hammer, and the straw rope, okay? And over here at level two, I can, build, I can learn a campfire. This automatically will happen. You just have to go in and click it. And the red dots tell you that you have a, an unclaimed, um, an unclaimed uh, recipe. So we're going to go over here. Looks like I have the bedroll and the wooden chest. We can go ahead and click that. And it looks like I have the pole arm. I can do a couch lance. No, no, no. It's not a couch lance. What is it? I can't see what it is, but we'll go ahead and we'll we'll learn it. We'll learn it. We'll see what it is. That's the bow and the arrow. It's a crossbow, the shield, and the throwing rock. So we're gonna learn how to make a throwing rock. And then we also have um, of course wanted protective armor, wooden armor is good. Um, until you get into the higher armors, like the lamellar armor. I would highly suggest you be very careful around the foxes and the boars, okay? I wish I'd have known that because they will kill you quick. Now, if you are in the novice mode, though, you can respawn right where you, right where you die. So it's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and let's make a, uh, let's make a couple of straw rope right quick. Um, I can craft seven. You know what? I'll craft, I'll craft eight while we walk to our destination. I'm going to look on the map. Now, I went ahead and I put myself here at the... Um, in the forest. I like the forest. Um, now, there's I see a lot of people that are going in this area right here. Um, I don't know what this is here. And eventually, okay, it goes from east. All, all the spawn areas are started on the east, and then you work your way west, where, where the more advanced materials are. Only the most basic materials are going to be here. But this is where we have our compound on the official server. So we do have an official uh, uh, PVE um, compound, which is going to be like right here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to hoof it over there. Actually, we're going to hoof it over there so I can get started. I'm just going to take the road. I think I don't think I have to worry about it. If you see, okay. Another thing I wish I'd have known is if you see a couple of soldiers sitting or people sitting by or at a campfire, they're probably going to be friendly. The villages are definitely not friendly at all. Okay. Villages are not friendly. But campfire people are probably going to be friendly. They're going to, you can recruit them. If you go up to them and speak with them, 
they're going to ask you for something. And if you have it and you give it to them, then all of a sudden, and this will be one of your quests, all of a sudden you're going to be able to, uh, they, they're going to follow you. Then you're, then, you, then they are your, uh, then they're your, um, your thrall. Okay. I'm going to go this way. I think we have one right here. The question mark are different things like, um, like we got the foxes and rabbits and, or campfires or, um, or actual, um, villages. I don't think this is the village. Is this the village? This might be the village actually down here. I'm going to sprint it because I can. Is the rope done? Rope is finished. Let's go ahead and we're going to make ourselves a stone axe. And then I'm also I'm going to need one more branch to make a stone hammer. Let me pick another. Their branches are everywhere along the ground, or they were. And so are the stones. We'll find another branch. We'll make ourselves a stone hammer. The hammer is basically the pick of the game, the pickaxe. Okay. So you don't have to worry about. Um, oh, by the way, you don't have to worry about except for wolves. You don't have to worry about um, down here. You don't have to worry about any other animal attacking you, um, unless you attack it first. Like right there, we got rabbits. Those are rabbits. Huh. Um, let's see here. We're going to go with uh, the hammer as well. Go ahead and craft that. And, okay, so I'm going to put this here. And the other one will be ready in a second. And, the, okay, the other thing I, I wish I knew. Let me go ahead. I'm going to chop a tree. And we're going to talk about this. Is I, if, if you, okay. This is going to, okay. Is as I'm holding this, I only hit it once. But if you hit the B button, B as in B, right? B as in bear, you hit B, then you can hit the tree as many times as you want, okay? Until it falls down or your axe, um, or your axe uh, breaks. Now, speaking of your axe breaking, let me grab a couple more branches, a couple more stones. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have some extra stuff in your inventory to fix your, your tools, because if your axe is completely broken, it will disappear. But can you fix your axe? Yes, you can. You pull. This is another thing I wish I knew about the game is when you, if you want to fix your, your tool, right, put it, you have to put it in the spot where it was made. Okay. So if you make, if you were, if you make something in your inventory, you have to put it back up into your inventory from your bar before you can, before you can uh, repair it. Okay. But you can repair it, right? Click, go to repair and it will unfortunately cost exactly the same amount that it cost to make it. So you want to wait until either make a bunch of them and go out. If you know you're going to burn through a bunch of your, your, your tools, if you know you're going to burn through your tool ahead of time, make a spare. Otherwise you have to carry the materials it takes to make it. And those can sometimes be pretty heavy. So you might be lighter. You might be better off in your carry weight to just make a second weapon. Um, as of right now, we don't have to worry about it too much. I've got things turned up pretty high, so I'm not going to worry about it too awful much. I'm just going through, remember, the things I wish I knew when I first started the game. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna, I'm heading toward the, toward the coastline here because I want to get to where we are on the other server. These are foxes that are here. Foxes will not attack you unless you attack them first. There are wolves occasionally that do spawn in this area. We just had one of our, our guildmates get attacked. Or, or is that, are these wolves? Those are wolves right there, I think. Or are those pigs? Can't tell. Do I get... Okay, that's a pig. I think that was a wolf. Is that a wolf? No, it's a pig. I think the wolves will attack me and kill me, but that's fine. All right, we're down here at the water. Let's go ahead and see if I can remember which way I want to go. I think it's this way. We're going to get up on a ridge, and then I'm going to go ahead. When I get to my camp, guys, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll start again. Oh, it's right over here. Never mind. Yeah, our place is right over here. All right, another thing that I wish I knew when I first started this, uh, this game is, the, um, is if you look in the top left-hand side of the screen, right up in here, the top one is your health, the middle one is your stamina, and the bottom one is your food. And your health and your stamina will get filled up at the expense of your food bar. So if you're sprinting and you're using up your stamina, what, when it, as it fills up, your food bar is getting less, okay? So if you're wondering why you're running through so much food, it's because you've been sprinting and not walking and or you're getting hurt and you're getting healed, okay? So that's why you're going through so much food. If you're wondering if, why you're going through so much food. All right, so let's go ahead. What do we, what do we have over here? What are these? Pigs, okay. Pigs are good. I'm okay with pigs. 
But I'm gonna, I don't care about this right now. We just want to get to where we're going to go. We're going to get to our location, which is right up that hill right there. That's where we're going to that's where we're going to ha make camp. Because that's also where I ha we have our place on the other server. So may as well make it all look like home. Another thing that I wish I knew when I first started this game, if you hit the equal button, it's auto run. Auto run is the equal button. Okay, guys, this is where I live um, on the other server, where we live on the other server. It's right up here. This is a nice, lot, really big flat area uh, with a bunch of wildlife and whatnot. The wolves that I was talking about, they're back that direction, so I'm not too worried about them at the moment. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to put down uh, some items here. And and we're going to go ahead and we're going to see what all we, can, we need to do here. I'm, right now, I'm going to go ahead and we have a few rest. Let's see, I'm level 7 now. I'm level 7, almost level 8. We have the campfire. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I can't make one because I need uh, two more rope and I need some rubble. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use all, make all the rope I can at the moment. And then I'm going to gather some rubble by hand. Actually, I'm not going to gather rubble by hand. We can go ahead and we can use the, um, the hammer to, make, to get our rubble working. All right. Another thing that I wish that I knew before I started this game before was that with a guild you want to get your guilds working as fast as possible So we want to go ahead and we want to create a guild go to the guild tab, which is right here Go to create guild. I should have done that right away, too And we're gonna call this uh, the usuals because that's the name of my uh, That's my guild on the other server. So confirm the usuals are there guild created and now as I do things I will get guild points. I will get guild uh, activity points Specifically for everything that I do so there's no so use no reason if you're not in a guild you should make a guild So you get activity points because the guild uh, Skills and the guild tech uh, The guild tech have the same type of advancement recipes only it's for the guild Okay, so like you're gonna find that you're gonna be able to create a guild shop You're gonna create the guild workshop. You're gonna create the uh, guild depot which allows you to transfer between or uh, between wait is it the depot no you can actually yeah the depot allows you to put in uh, coins and and materials and horses and and warriors so that you can share it among the guild um, you got the uh, the stronghold which is going to be be the uh, minefield the granary the quarry the lumber yard and you've got uh, the war, the things of war you also have better uh, better planters which are like double the size of your crude planters that you're going to be able to make personally. So there's a lot in here with the guild stuff that you need. So you need, but you need it. You need points, you need guild activity points to be able to make these things. So you want to start getting your guild activity points working as fast as possible. So uh, it's definitely a thing that you want to do. If you're not in a guild, make a guild because that otherwise you're going to be missing out in the end. That's another thing that I really missed out on for the first two days that I had this, uh, my other character. So let's look at, see what levels we're at and see what kind of recipes we can do and we'll go from there. Okay, that's the stone sickle. Okay, this is the, uh, this is the, the first fishing, but that's the harpoon. Harpoon, as far as I'm concerned, is useless. Oh, uh, the weave, we need the spinning wheel, we need that. Let's see, we also can do tailor bench. We definitely, and the weapon bench, we need those. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go, I think that's all I got right now at level 12. Let's go ahead and this is all of our housing materials. So we're going to go ahead and do all this. I'm going to open all this up. This will happen to you within the first hour that you're here. I'm just doing it within the first 30 minutes. Weapons. It's a bone sword. Pole arm. That's a bow. And then we have the uh, better wooden armor and the bronze armor. So this keen sight soup, what it says is, it's a soup with a faint medicine scent. Drink it and to enhance your eyesight for a period of time, which can help you find basic mine, trees, and animals. If you go to the talent skill and you go to uh, physique and go to mining, and you look at right here at recognized copper mine, it says at level 150, allows you to find copper or within 100 meters more easily use this ability. You also need to use keen sight soup to enhance your eyesight at level 150. So you have to get your mining up to 150 and unlock this perk to be able to use the keen soup. So you have to understand if you're not able to use a thing in the game, look for the other thing. That is something I wish I knew. 
I wasted so much time on that keen sight soup, did not know. But if you can't do one thing, it's probably tied to something else. So I would look through, I would look through some, whatever you think it might be tied to, you definitely want to look and see where that skill is in the tree. That way you can go ahead and, and know when to expect it. At this point, you're going to want to go ahead and you're at level six. You're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to make a territory banner because you don't want your things to disintegrate. If you look at either item here, it says natural decay rate, 4% per hour. Territory banner can prevent it from decay. Okay. I wish I'd have known this earlier, although it didn't really matter at the time because this stuff doesn't really matter at this point in the game. But the territory banner does matter, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and I, I look here. At level six, you're going to find the territory banner under the building for furniture under this right here. It's going to be right there under basic defensive building. We learned that at level six. So we're going to go ahead and I want to go ahead and make a bow. And we want to make some arrows because we're going to need uh, the arrows. Uh, we're going to have to kill some things because for the territory flag, you need one piece of hide. That's all you need is one piece of hide. Um, that's I'm sorry. That's the one thing that's more most difficult. Straw rope is easy. Branches are easy. The coarse hide you're going to need for the territory banner, and you want the territory banner. You need that territory banner to keep things from disintegrating. Okay, another thing that I wish I knew that is actually happens a lot in video games that would have bows and arrows is that you have to take your stone arrows and put them over your bow to put them into your arrow. So if you want to switch out different types of arrows, that's how you do it. You want to add your arrows to your bow before you get uh, before you start hunting because that's definitely something that you're going to want to do. Also, where you when you get close to a, an animal, you will you it will pop up the level, so you're going to be able to see it from not too far away, but you do have to get kind of close. And we're going after a rabbit right now. I also made a skinning knife, which I'm going to use which you get at level 15. You can get the stone hunting knife. Happens at, if you don't have a stone hunting knife and you need a you need a, something, you can use you can use your hatchet. Your hatchet will will ha will uh, skin an animal, but the hunting knife is better, but your uh, but but your but your axe is uh is okay. So now we have we have a, a deer over here. Deer are they they are kind of for the for the bow I've got, I'm not going to actually hunt them. We're going to actually hunt um, rabbits, I would not suggest fox because they will swarm you, and so will the boar. Any any of these animals will swarm you, except for the rabbits and the deer. All right, we see the, uh, the all the ones right here. And another thing I wish I knew is the V button will allow you to go from first person to third person. V is in victory. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pull out my bow. Then they will. Alert that once they alert, uh, one of them alerts the other ones. They're all gonna run away. One, one arrow should do the trick though. Got him. You have ten minutes before the animal will disappear. Okay, now once you have your hide, guys, we can go ahead and we can make our flag. I'm going to need two more straw rope. Let's go ahead and make two more straw rope. And I'm going to go ahead and we're, I'm just going to place it right there. Okay? So it doesn't really matter because every two days you're going to have to replace this thing. But hopefully in two days you'll have the next thing which will keep protect you even more. What is going to happen here guys is now um, we have a little bit of degradation on the on the campfire and on the on the bedroll. We had we one bark, one branch, one grass will fix it. Uh, one rope, one branch and one rubble will fix that. However, so what you have here now is you have a territory that will uh, be protected from degradation. Let's go ahead and sh show where it's going to show right here. You hold down the E button click on it. You hold down the email e button and then click on it. You have a purple outline here. This is how much space you have around the flag that will keep things from being uh, uh, from degrading. That's all it does. It doesn't keep we're on a P, if you're on a PVE server, then you don't have to worry about anybody getting into your stuff. They can get into your campfires, but they can't get into your um, your stations. They can't get into your personal belongings. They can get into your campfire though. A campfire is open open season. That's it. But um, all this does 
is protect it from being uh, from falling apart. It doesn't protect it from them destroying it, and it doesn't protect it, uh, you know, from you know from them camping on it. So, um, if you have uh, a house and somebody comes in, the doors open, they walk right in, and they decide they want to log out inside of your house. Then they're inside your house until they decide they want to walk out again. There's not a thing you can do about it on a PVE server. Um, the next item that you want to get to really protect your things, the thing that you want that you think that this flag is that it is not, is under the guild tech. And I talked about this earlier. Guild tech is super important. Get into your guild as soon as possible because you're going to want to have the boundary marker. This is what you're going to want, okay? You need to have a level 2. You need to be a level 2 in your and you have to be level 16 at least to your person. And you have to have a uh, a guild workshop so you can make your boundary marker, okay? So be aware you're going to have to make this workshop and make the boundary marker. The boundary marker is what protects all of your things from not only degradation, but also attack. And they and you have to pay this 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 monument. It's just like life is fuel of the MMO, where it's a it's a monument that you're going to have to you're gonna to have to feed every week to be able to keep the uh, you know the protection going on. Uh, you can only protect yourself during certain times, but you can protect yourself during certain times, like when you're offline. Okay? So we'll get more into the boundary marker in a future episode. Okay, so the last and final thing that everybody wants to know is how do you make money in this game, right? Okay, well, one way of making money is the quest that you've been doing. I got a couple of quests already done today in this video. We craft a straw rope. I claimed it. We're going to get two copper coins and 50 XP. That's great. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Um, let's see. We got collect stone and wood. Uh, collect six rubble and six branch. These are the the beginning quests that are going to get you XP and copper. Going to get you up the get those levels up. So you know, just so you know. Okay, so you've got main quests, you've got side quests. Which uh, let's see, what do I mark on the map? That's mark. Oh, click M to open the map and click the right mouse button to add a marker. I just did that. So we have 100 XP for that and 100 copper coins. That's amazing. And then map map exploration. Anyway, you get the idea. You have your side quests, your main quests. Oh, I got that one too. Let's claim that. That was three copper coins. So I have a whole 111 copper coins so far. That's how you make your money right here. At least that's what I thought. And I wish I'd have known this other thing. All right, the last thing I'm going to leave you with, guys, is the is the, the territory banner. So if you go and you click on it, it says here, the Imperial Court will regularly pay copper coins to purchase resources in your boundary marker. Check the items you want to sell. Now, you can do this with your territory banner and with the territory marker that I just talked about, right? The second one. The one is in your guild your guild settings, the, the, the guild tech. That's, you, you can do it on both of these. And if you look here, it says personal amount and re guild remaining guild number. Okay, this is the, these two things are the same thing. The balance and the balance, those are the same thing. The personal is how much you have available. And the guild is how much the guild has available. You're like, what are you talking about? That makes no sense. I know. Okay, now look. The personal left amount is how many items that the Imperial Court will buy from you. The balance is how much money they will pay for these 504 items. Okay, what do you mean? Okay, look. I go ahead and you go wildflowers. Now, see, you see these ghost images? Ignore that. That's garbage that needs to go away. All right, wildflower, I'm going to use it for an example. Okay, actually, we'll, we'll, you know, tell it. we'll do wildflower, we'll do uh, fur, uh, we'll do rubble, sticks, bark, maybe some seed. How about flax? Whatever. So each of these items, is uh, each of these base materials is worth something to the Imperial Court. Okay? They're all varied in, in, in amount. So... These wildflowers, you click on it, they're worth 3.70, and you have 14 of them, right? So multiply 14 times 3.70, that's how much money. 51 copper is what they will buy that for, okay? But don't sell the first thing that you get. Relax, calm down. We're going to go ahead and check on this one. This one is 6. Actually, we can click on all of these, and it will show. It will show what they're all worth. Okay, so they don't want seeds. All right, so, and they do not want processed materials, okay? So once you pull something out, it, it screws with it. So let's do this. So we're going to go ahead, 
and we're going to look at, like, I'm going to try stone arrows. Will they take stone arrows? No, they don't want stone arrows, okay? It says 79, but forget about that, uh, because that's not right. Let me get out of it and go back in. Okay, so now, you can use the your, you can use this banner, by the way, as a place to hold things, but I don't know if people can get into it on the PvE server. I haven't tested that yet. Don't trust it. You can use it as a temporary holding container. Like, if you don't have any storage, you could use that. You could also, obviously, use your, uh, you can use your campfire as storage as well. That's a big old, you can't, but people can get into your campfire, so be, be aware. Be aware. You know, build it inside your house and close the door. Anyway, but, so here we've got, these are the different items and what they're going to pay for it. It might be different on your server, depending on how much sales have gone on. So you look at everything here and let's see what is the most expensive item. It's going to be the fur, hands down, at $6.60 a piece, and I've got 22 of them. Now, the personal left amount is the number of items they will buy, period. doesn't matter what they're worth. The, it's only going to buy what this amount of items from you until it resets. I don't know how often it resets. I think it's, it might be a week. I expect it's probably a week. We just discovered this the other day, so we're working on it. I'm going to figure it out for you. Maybe you can tell me in the comments section. Somebody who sees this six months from now will go, this is dumb. We already know this, but this is a brand new game, so we don't know this, right? Okay, so anyway, I'm going to sell the fur. If we sell everything right now, we would get 1,621 copper. You know what? I don't think I need any of this stuff. I think I'm okay with, it, with, uh, with selling all of it, so we're going to sell all of it, and when I do, all right, that's 378 grass. That's going to eat up 378 of my personal left amount. Do I want that? No, I do not want that. So if I unclick that, or, well, no, hang on. It's going to have that same number. You got to back out and then go back in. I don't want that grass. That's not worth enough. See, it says 793. We don't want that. I want to sell my fur. Be very careful what you sell. 145. There we go. It's got 145 copper. You get the idea. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm beating a dead horse now. All righty guys. Well, there's a couple of other things I just realized that I, I forgot to tell you about is number one is where do you find hardwood? What about clay and how do I get stone? Okay. So the, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. So hardwood guys is going to come from this tree right here. This is a scaly, what I call a scaly palm. So you, oh, sorry, you use a use a, a regular axe, and you're gonna get hardwood from the scaly palm. The other trees, the other bushes, the things like that are gonna give you. Uh, it says bark and branches. There we go. There's the hardwood and the resin. Resin and hardwood are from this uh, scaly palm right here. Uh, the other things like this little baby one, all you're gonna get are branches and uh, and bark. Occasionally you get hardwood from some things, but that's not very. It's not very common. Not at all. All right, guys, and then this right here is what the clay looks like. We're going to go ahead and I'll just I hit it. It comes in cl clumps of like, you know, I don't know, half a dozen rocks. You get sand and clay from these guys. Mostly it's just clay. There's one there. There's one here. Uh, there's a couple there. They're, they're all up and down the waterways here. So just so you know, that's where I'm finding all my clay. And also, as far as stone goes, um, if you're hitting a rock and you're only getting rubble and sand, look for a different colored rock, okay? The, if, if, you, the, if you're only getting sand and you're only getting rubble, then stay away from those rocks. Use the other, usually I, when I found the darker the stone, the, uh, the more the rock, but it's not always the case. Sometimes you get a light rock that give you just stone, uh, but most of the time, the lighter the rock, the more the rubble and sand you're going to get from it. And the darker the rock, the more rock you're going to get. That's my experience anyway. But hey, that you know what? This game is uh, is a really weird one. So it's not a guarantee on those rocks. But I'm but usually, usually I'm right uh, with that. So, okay, guys, I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to do it. All, you got all your hardwood. You got your clay. I told you how to make money. I uh, showed you where, how to get stone. Um, all the starting stuff with the perks and whatnot. I think... That is everything that I wish I would have known. Those are all the stumbling blocks that I came across when I first started playing this game. So hopefully this helped you out. If it did, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do that right now. As I always say, I am my usual me, be your usual you, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.